We are here today in Rutgers University asking students if they can solve a coding question for a hundred bucks. Let's see how they do. All right, who am I here with? Sam Rashid. And what's your major and what year are you? I'm a computer science and quantitative economics student, junior. How would you rate your coding knowledge on a scale of one to 10? I'm gonna be honest, it's like a five. If I have this array and I want you to iterate through it and give me the sum, return me the sum, how would you do it? So you're asking me to calculate the sum of this array? Yeah. I know a little bit. Okay. So it'd be like, okay, for loop. Uh, I'm already messing this up. No, you're good. You're good. I know the last thing is obviously I plus plus. Uh huh. I'm gonna skip that for now, but okay. I, I do know something else. And then I probably just do another for loop of int equals j to iterate through. Wait, wait. If that's to iterate through, what is this first one to? To calculate each number, or to iterate each. Oh no, wait. What am I doing? This is gonna iterate through the whole array. Yeah. So yeah. what's the second loop for? I don't know. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's been a long day. I'll get. I'll get. Yeah. It's gonna be something with like. I equals plus something. I'm sorry, I'm very off. Hmm. That was a solid attempt. Solid attempt. I appreciate your effort. It's been a long time. Do you wave the white flag? I fully wave the white flag. Oh, well, it's okay. <laughs> Who am I here with today? I'm Jack. I'm a junior majoring in biomedical engineering. And now on a scale of one to 10, what would you rate your coding knowledge to be? Probably like a three. All right. So if I have this array, I want you to loop through it and return the sum. Okay, okay. I think that's it. This is what? Uh, the first element. Okay, and this? That's the counting amount. So and this is like mm -hmm. an array. So it's saying count one to five by increments of one. Okay, now there is one issue though. You don't always know how long A is gonna be. Yeah. So how would you fix that? Change this to a different variable. I'm just gonna name it L. And then L, that's non L, equals length of this array. So then I'll keep going for the entire length of the array. So the sum variable, is now equal to a of that plus sum. Yes. And this keeps looping over and over again yeah. till we reach the very end. Yes. Okay, cool. Now, that is good for part one. The next challenge is if I have a string, how do I tell if it's a palindrome? So a palindrome is a word like race car mm -hmm. where the first and the last are the same. Yeah. Letters, and it goes all the way through. So how do you write me out a function that can tell if a string is a palindrome? I plus one, okay. One to L. Now, okay. The only thing I'm not sure of is if this is gonna end if it doesn't get work. So you have an empty if statement. Yo, that is also true. Yes. <laughs> I'm helping you debug. I want you to win the hundred dollars. Um, to make this a true statement, son. And then what is going on? I have no clue. A while. A while. <laughs> Wait. So you're whiling the for loop. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Sure, sure. B is equal to one. So while B equals one. And then end it there. And then end this on there. Okay, guys, I I'm not gonna lie, I'm very confused. Does he deserve the money? I don't think so. So, track that. Okay, if it's equal, you did an assignment operator. So what do you gotta fix? Okay, then you set B equals to one, right? That's correct. And then it's gonna skip this, then it's gonna loop over, and now check the next one, the next yes. one. B equals one. Except for converting string to array part, this actually works. So, do you feel like you learned something today? A little bit. All right, he is winning the $100. Here you go. Thank you. What are you gonna do with the money? Pay for groceries, because I'm broke. Yeah, go. Healthy groceries? Yes, of course. All right, what, what are you going for? Protein, veggies? Yeah, both. All right, that's what we want. Good luck, right. good luck. Thank you. Who am I here with? Uh, Ali. Ashish. And what year are you guys? Uh, I'm a senior. Junior. What's your majors? Computer science. Computer engineering. And if you had to rate your coding knowledge on a scale of one to 10, each of you, what would you say? Probably seven. Six, probably. So the first question, if I have a string, like race car. How do I tell if it's a palindrome? Palindrome basically means the first letter, the last letter, everything is like a mirror. One of you come and code it. What language would you use? You can use any language, any language? you want. Uh, Python. I say Java. I feel like okay, I'm thinking, Java. I'm thinking <laughs> Java right now. So. All right, come, come, come. Do it. So race car. Could I make like a different variable? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go inside? for it, go for it. So let's just say different variable. Set up the for loop. Yeah, and post to check. What's, what's going on in your head? What so are you I'm trying to do? I'm just thinking about it. What I'm going to do, like, so I'm going to take this string and, like, flip it and put the, like, values into this string and then at the end check if they equal each other, basically. Okay, so how do you flip it? I think... Does yeah, your buddy want to help you? Yeah, actually, actually you help me. All right, we're phoning a friend. What do you think about his thought process? Wait, what was that again? You put that in that what? <laughs> okay, so I'm thinking about taking like the string, yeah. string A, flipping it, putting into B. So like, it would be like, like... Oh, yeah, flip it, and then you compare both of those strings. Do you want proper syntax, or just uh, see what code is okay? De decent syntax. Decent. Yeah, because he picked Java for a reason, right, so we can't, we can't skip on. If you want easy syntax, pick Python. Oh, no, I'd rather prefer Java or C. <laughs> All right, I can tell you messed up somewhere. Is that? 
Wait, no, no, no. Still no, wrong. No, 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 no. It should be I's greater than oh, zero. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How's I negative? Greater than or equal to zero. And then I forgot the function to add on to the string. Substring. But that's how you take a part of the string. Uh, B. B equals. It takes both of them. It takes two values, two you're saying? Two values. Okay. If I try to jump in and. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, he's phoning back the original friend. Wait one second. How would you rate your friend's performance? You say eight. Eight out of ten. Okay, okay. You got a pretty good friend there. Okay, b plus equals a dot substring, i minus one comma i. What does this do? So when you're doing a string, it would basically be like zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Mm -hmm. You're gonna start at six and go to seven. So that would be from this letter, and i minus minus is like subtracting one from i every like iteration of the for loop. So then we'd go to a and then c and then e and then c and a and then r uh -huh. and it, it would stop. Um, this is the only part that I don't know why okay. it's just confusing me. I feel like this wouldn't be equal to like for some reason something. The problem with this code is because you allow it to go down to zero, you basically yeah. end up with a negative index here, yeah. right? So rather to simplify all of this, the best strategy is actually to just cast this to a character array and then iterate through and see if the length minus i plus i at that position are equal to each other. And the second they're not equal to each other, you return false. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you guys for right. trying out the coding challenge. You guys did pretty good. Good work, good work. But um, on to the next. <laughs> Who am I here with? Aditya. What's your major and what's your year? I'm a junior and uh, I'm studying computer science and math. If you could rate your coding knowledge on a scale of one to 10, where would it be? I'd rate it a six. So I have an array. I want you to write me out a function that iterates through the array and returns the sum. Returns the sum, okay. Yeah. So uh, I'll hold on to this while you're doing that. I'll define function. What language is this? Uh, I'm gonna code in Python. All right, cool, yeah. cool. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a tracker to track the sum. So I'm just gonna do uh, sum equals zero. And then for, since we're doing Python, I can just say for num in array, we can just do sum plus equals num. So we're gonna be adding our sum to each number in the array, and then we can just simply return our sum. And that should return the sum of the numbers in the array. Okay, what is the time complexity of this? Uh, this should be O of N, because we're checking each element in the array, where uh, N is the number of elements in the array. Good, good. Are you confident in this answer? Yeah, I'm pretty confident. Okay, well, I'm happy to say this is correct. Uh, good work, good work, man. Now let's spice it up. Oh no. <laughs> so this is an array, right? Yeah. Now we have a target sum of nine. Okay. Yeah. I want you to go through this array and determine if any two numbers of this array can add up to a given sum, like in this case, this sum. Got it, okay. All right? Yeah. It's a standard two sum problem on lead code. Yeah, so I've, let's I've heard this problem, it. but And yeah. you need to solve it efficiently. That's the key. Okay. Well, What's going through your mind? Right now I'm thinking about the brute force solution, which is O of n squared, where we would look at this number and we look at all of the other numbers and check if they add up to the sum. And then if it doesn't, then we go to the next number and then go through all of the other numbers and check if they add up to sum. But obviously that's not the most efficient solution. So I'm thinking we can use a hash map. So with the hash map, what we can do is we can store the potential like number in the array. Uh -huh. And it's, using a hash map, it's O of 1 when we look it up. So what we can do is we can check if the sum minus whatever number we're checking in the array is in our hash map. And if that's the case, then that means there exists two elements such that they add up to the sum. Okay. Yeah. It sounds decent, uh, but let's see it out in code. Okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I'll define uh, two sum and I'll take our array. So I'll create a hash map. So in Python, I think it's curly. So yes. what we can do at the start is we can say for num in array. Mm -hmm. And now what we can do is uh, before we do anything with our hash map, let's just check if we can do if. So, uh, okay, it's sum, but we're gonna take array and uh, instead of sum, can I just say target? Sure. All right, so array and target. Target is a sum, by the way. Yeah, I'll just say target here as well. Okay. And what we can do is if target minus num is in hash map, and the way I'm gonna store the hash map is our key is gonna be the like one value in the array, okay. and the value is gonna be the index of the element. So for example, we could have like three, and the value of this would be uh, two. So, oh, for, for this problem, do you want me to return two numbers, or do you want me to return two indices? You just have to return true or false. It's a boolean. Or true or false. Yeah. Okay. If this sum exists, return true. If it doesn't exist, return false. Okay, we don't even need a hash map then. We can just use a, something called a set. Oh, yeah. so okay. So set is uh, similar to a hash map, but we're just storing one value instead of two. Google, hire this man. Come on. <laughs> I hope, yeah. If Google's here, like. <laughs> yeah, please. <laughs> yeah, please. So uh, I'll just, just do s for set. s equals set. Mm -hmm. And if target minus num is in our set, then we can just return true. And then now we have to add numbers. So we do set the add num. And if we go through this whole uh, for loop and we see that there is no like mm -hmm. two numbers, then we can just return false. And I think that should correct. 
Are yeah. you confident? Oh wait, let me do, I don't think it said it's S, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty confident. What would be the time complexity of this? The time complexity, I think it should be O of N still, because we're just going through each element once. So it'd be O of N, where N is like the number of elements in the array. Mm. And then if we're thinking about space complexity as well, it'd be O of N as well, because our set would contain N elements. How can we reduce the space complexity? I'm thinking possible reduce space complexity, because we need to check if there are two numbers. Oh, is the array ordered or? No, or you're not guaranteed that, no. It's not guaranteed, okay. Okay, so it's unordered. I don't think we can change the space complexity then. Oh, very good, very yeah. good, very good. That, that, that was actually a trick question. Oh, God. So okay, like yeah. changing the space complexity, you'd have to go to the brute force solution, which is O of one, but you increase the time complexity by a lot. Got it, okay. okay. Yeah. Cool, now final question. Oh no. <laughs> You've been doing really good so far. So far, I know, <laughs> yeah. Okay, obviously an array is not always sorted. Yeah. Sometimes, right? Sometimes yeah. you can have stuff like this. I want you to implement a sorting algorithm. Implement a sorting algorithm. That is efficient. Efficient. Whatever that means to you. Okay, so an efficient sorting algorithm. So I took algorithms, so I know an efficient sorting algorithm should be n log n. Mm -hmm. But I took that course like a while back, so I'm gonna have to like think about how to like implement. So I'm thinking one thing we can do is we can try implementing something called merge sort. Okay. So in merge sort, what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to take our array and keep dividing it. So uh, for example, we have four elements in our array, right? So when merge sort, we would divide it. So we'd have two elements here and two elements here, and we would keep dividing it here. So mm -hmm. one element here, one element here, one element here, and one element here. And then what we want to do is once we have the base case, then we just return the element. And then we go here, we order it based on these two. And that would be O of N, and this would be O of N. These would just be O of 1. But mm -hmm. yeah, it would be O of N. And since this whole tree is like log N, because mm -hmm. we're dividing it by 2, we would go to, uh, yeah, each step would be O of N. But since this whole tree is log N, like level takes O of N time, except the last one. But still, the rest take O of N. It would just be N log N, which I think should be optimal. How long sense? The tricky part, I think, is like implementing it. Yeah, and actually, you did so good that I don't even want you to implement it. Really? And I, winner, winner, chicken dinner. You won the 100 bucks. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Like, you, you, you crushed all the coding challenges. Thank you, yeah. And I think you have a bright future ahead of you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, question, what are you going to do with the money now? I'm going to maybe get Leekode Premium. <laughs> I don't know. You're gonna get Lee Code Premium with uh, it. Yeah, I don't know, but like, yeah, thank you so much. Of course, no, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Hope you guys like that. Well, that's about all I have in this video. I really hope that you guys enjoyed it, and if you did, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and if you're interested in learning what software engineers do on a day-to-day -day basis, you might like this video right here.